All right, Shay, welcome to the podcast, man. Uh, it's great to have you. I know you've listened a couple of times. It's good to have you on the podcast. Thank you for having me. So one of the things we love to do just at the very beginning is introduce some rapid fire questions, get a little yep. bit warmed up. Um, and one thing I noticed right away is your accent. <laughs> what is an interesting Newfoundland oh. fact? Ah, uh, an interesting Newfoundland fact. There isn't many. We're, a lot of people call uh, call Newfies uh, not the smartest. <laughs> That's about it, really. <laughs> That's about it that I can think of. You, you guys have your own time zone, right? Like, if you, is yes, like, we yeah. do. It's actually an hour and a half after it. Eastern, which is pretty weird. That is wild. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy called Curtis on our team. Same thing. Okay, one more. Another question. What is your pre-stream ritual? Um, I usually edit a few clips before I stream and watch some anime. That's about it. Oh, what time are you getting up at? I get up every morning around 7 a.m. And I start my stream at 9 a.m., which is 8 a.m. EST. Cool. So you got that two, two hour buffer before you, you yeah. go live. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's always nice to just wake up and let your brain settle so you're not just waking up and going live right away, I find. Totally. Do you like watch any other content? You get inspired by any other content in the morning? Um, the, the I watch a lot of uh, Rex in the morning just because usually while I'm getting ready, he's sitting down and talking to chat for the first hour, so it's just he's entertaining. <laughs> Next one. Uh, how would you describe your content in three words? Uh, fun, motivational, and sometimes rage. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you could only have one war zone loadout and the rest get deleted. What's your loadout? Uh, right now or of all time with all, all metas? Time, all time. Kilo MP5. <laughs> uh, Old school. How do you decompress after streaming? Uh, usually after I stream, I sit down with uh, my wife and just watch some TV or get supper ready or something like that. But uh, it's usually just hanging out with my wife, yeah. If you could collaborate with any non-gaming celebrity, who would it be? And what kind of content would you want to make? Any celebrity at all. Uh, well, uh, my gaming Oh, non-gaming. Yeah. So um, my childhood dream and still to this day is to meet Eminem one day so i would love to meet him and it'd be cool to get him to get on the sticks and play some cob but that ain't gonna happen i don't think <laughs> never say never did you watch the super bowl the i did show? i did that was crazy was so i was nostalgic. jumping out of my seat <laughs> when they yeah. put 50 cent as the surprise and he was hanging upside down i was losing it <laughs> <laughs> all right i wanted to chat a little bit about um in April 2020, you made the switch to Facebook gaming. Mm -hmm. And it looks like it paid off well ever since like last October. You said it changed your family's life. Yep. Can you share a little bit more about that? Um, so I was on um I was on the per I was on Twitch for probably eight months to a year and little to no traction, like probably under 10 to 20 viewers, but I first picked up on streaming by watching nice wig and nice wig from apex legends and he's he was the guy who like motivated me to just start streaming and pick it up one day and i switched because i seen a lot of potential from z laner and stone mountain and everybody over on facebook and dimes gaming was another big one that i watched when i was playing fortnite i was a barber before this and a couple of my co-workers actually went to school with z laner went to high school with them. So I didn't even know Facebook gaming existed. I thought it was a joke when I first heard about it because it's Facebook. That's where your grandmother goes to post a better day. And um, I seen how well everybody was doing and I was still grinding, trying to get my name out there through Twitch. And I switched to Facebook and it took like six to eight months, but I started meeting people and networking a lot. And it just blew up probably around beginning December and it just went off from there and it changed like I said on, in that post you asked me about it changed my family's life with financial wise just me being happier in general because I wasn't in the best mindset before all of that and it just completely done a 180 
I love to it was that. so hype. It was so hype. When it first started happening, man, I was losing my mind. I couldn't wait to wake up the next morning. I absolutely like, I, I didn't want to go to bed because I wanted to keep doing it. When you, you were talking about you were watching on Twitch at the time, and you were a barber, and your buddies were watching Zillion, and you're like, what made you start? Like, why did you actually take the leap to going to do it? Because most people don't do that. So I started streaming because I just wanted to make somebody's day better. I thought that it would be really cool to have an audience while I was gaming because I gamed a lot anyway. And I thought it would be cool to have a community and people watching. And I seen what watching Nicewig stream, for example, when I first started watching Apex, and that's the first game I streamed. And when I watched this stream, if I was in a bad mood or anything, he was such an inspirational guy that it, I just zoned out and I forgot everything that was going on. So I wanted, I, my whole goal of starting streaming, even if it was to one person, if I can just create that same experience where somebody can forget about their problems for five minutes, 10 minutes, three hours, four hours in the day, that'll, that at the end of the day, that'll make me happy. So awesome to hear. When you, when you were making that transition, you were, you were the barber at the time and you started streaming, were you balancing both? Was it like, are you still working full time or have you transitioned out now? I'm transitioned out now, but when I first started, it was, it was a crazy grind. I was waking up around 7 a.m. to work uh, at the barber shop and I'd work around 10 hours. I'd come home. I'd want to spend time with my wife. You know, I, like, I needed family time. And then when she went to bed, I'd start my stream up around 12 in the night and go until 4 or 5 a.m. and rinse and repeat. You were back up at 7? Yeah. <laughs> so you were getting and, two to three hours of sleep at night. Which was tough, very tough. And it even came down to me like moving my setup up and down stairs because I didn't want to wake my wife up because my whole desk, I had a very small setup at the time, and my whole desk was in our bedroom because we have roommates at the time. So in the nighttime, when she went to bed, I would unplug everything, take it like all my equipment upstairs, take the legs off of my desk, bring my desk upstairs and put it all back together so I could stream at night. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> crazy to think about because that's like a, I would hate to move my setup now. <laughs> yeah, you've got to like perfectly optimize and then. Yeah. How long did that hack go on for? Uh, probably about eight months. But it wasn't, I, I was very inconsistent on Twitch. I was only doing like four, three to four nights a week, depending on how tired I was. Absolutely phenomenal, the dedication you had. Hey, I just want to take a little pause from the episode to tell you about an amazing opportunity that we have. Stone's going to share a little more details, but if you're interested in growing your stream, then listen to what he has to say. Did you know there's a proven way to grow your stream? I get that growing your audience can feel impossible. I've been there, but I'm here to tell you that with the right framework, it's not only possible, I try and make it as simple as possible. I spent the last 10 years learning how to hone my craft and I've distilled the most important things that I've learned into a one hour free live training session. I'm gonna be talking about the most important things that you should be focusing on to create amazing content, grow your audience and to monetize. You shouldn't be working hard and not seeing results. I want to save you from working on the stuff that isn't really moving the needle for you. There's a proven framework that every streamer uses to grow. It might be in different ways, but I'll even show you examples of how it's worked with many new creators. So what's the secret? Stay tuned for the session. Find out. Spots are even limited. So make sure to save it now. And I hope to see you there. Just click the link in the episode description to register. Since COD in 2000, or since like COD 4 in 2007, there's been like so many different COD games over the years. What era in COD do you consider like the glory days? Modern Warfare 2, 2009. <laughs> what about it the did you best. like the most? I, um, me, that just brings me back to like my childhood of me and all my friends just being addicted to Call of Duty, staying up all night, playing ga game battles, search and destroy literally just it was the most fun it was the most fun just 
I don't even know how to explain the feeling, even thinking about it, because it just brings you back. Like a nostalgic feeling, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of creators, they ask about when you're first starting out, like what game to choose. Or like, should you even bind your content to like a particular game? You're very well known as a COD player. What makes you like continue to do that versus going on like another trend that might be happening? Um, well, the reason that I stick with COD and the reason that I switched to COD was because I just, I grew up on Call of Duty. It was, it's always been my all time favorite. I've played a, a bunch of other stuff. When I first started streaming, it was Apex Legends and then Fortnite, which I was terrible at. I don't know why I tried it <laughs> playing against 12 year olds who just was in creative 12 hours a day. It wasn't fun. And uh, then Warzone came out and I just seen the opportunity to switch over. But uh, picking a game, in my opinion, if you're starting out, pick a game that you're going to be happy with, because if you come into this with a bad taste in your mouth off, uh, off just the game, it's not going to end well. Yeah, showing up for that long, especially in the circumstance you were talking about. If you had to move your rig and get three hours of sleep and play a game that you hated. Yeah, that wouldn't be fun. <laughs> Still, I commend you on that. Um, what do you think are the like both the challenges of playing one game and then some of the benefits of doing it? Um, so playing one game creates consistency for your community. And because you have your lifelong viewers that's going to stick around no matter what. No matter what game you play, they're going to be there. But there's a lot of people that watch who just lurk and they don't type in chat. They just like watching you play this game. And if you switch to another game, chances are the people who are lurking as three or four other streamers that they watch play the same game. So they're just going to go over to them for that day. But... Being a variety streamer is the ultimate goal for everyone, really. Look at Shroud right now. He, I think a couple of years ago, he said, why would I ever play a game that I don't like anymore? At the point, at the level that I am, why would I do that to myself? And I would love to be there, but I feel like I would lose some viewership doing so. So I want, I'm, that's why I stick to one game, really. Hmm. Have you tried experimenting, switching out to another one? Have you seen a dip? Um, I tried it when probably about a year ago and there is a dip, you know, like switching to a new game is always going to be hard, no matter how big you are. Um, I was very small at the time, so I can't use myself as an example, but I'll use, let's just say Z laner as an example. When he switched to Warzone from Fortnite, he lost like... He went from averaging 3k CCV to around 600 to 800, but look at him now. But that's, it's a scary thing in your head when you're switching games, but you ultimately you need to do what makes you happy. Yeah. Cause it's hard. I mean, you're going to show up and be consistent and you hate yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Cause it, it creates burnout. If you, if you're constantly playing a game that you're not having fun with, you're going to get burnt out. One of the things I think you're well known for is just being really motivational for, for, for folks, but you were very honest and open about like, it wasn't always that way for you. Yep. What was it like in the, in the past versus how you are now? Um, so that goes back a bit. <laughs> um, so back when I was younger, you know, this is a lot of people come from this now, just a single parent at home. But my mom worked two jobs and I watched her struggle in a, in shitty relationships. I watched her struggle in shitty jobs, but she never gave up because she knew she had to provide for her kids. And there was actually a point this actually, I don't even think I told my stream this before. There was a point where we were homeless. We had to move in with my mom's best friend for three months because we had nowhere to live and it like all that takes a toll on you when you're younger which can create just ptsd in the future of your past and it's it's hard stuff to deal with and uh you know when i met my wife she made me a better person my mom made me a better person and it just all it all takes a toll on you. Everything in your life will take a toll on you and create any mental illness. And 
for example, I was a barber before I did this for probably a year straight before I quit being a barber. Actually, a year before COVID hit. I um I would wake up every single morning and cry until I got to work. And that's I've talked to str in my stream and stuff about that a few times, but I didn't even tell anyone that until last year, not even my wife. I didn't tell anyone. And which don't do that. You should always tell your closest friends and family what you're going through. And um it was tough. It was very tough. There was a lot of times that I didn't want to get out of bed. There's Still to this day, there's a lot of times that I don't want to get out of bed because when you work yourself so hard, it, it all just takes a toll on your mental. And I started, when COVID hit is when I really started streaming full time. I wasn't allowed to cut hair anymore. We shut down and I didn't know what I was going to do for money. I got a wife, I got a house, I had bills. I had no idea what I was going to do. And that's when I said, you know what? I love doing this. This is probably the highlight of my day when I when I stream and I'm going to this is this is my chance. That's what I said to myself. That's what my wife said to me. I'm very lucky with that. My my primary family, like my mom, my sister, my wife, her family, like her dad, everyone so supportive that I did this. There was a few family members that I had to cut out and a few friends that I had to cut out because of it. Because because they just brought the toxicity that would just bring me down and make me not believe in myself. And um, COVID just gave me the chance to try my best and work my ass off to live my dream. And I gave it my all. I started being super consistent. I wanted to treat it like a nine to five job because I still wanted my evenings to spend with my wife, to see my friends and family. And it's, it all started going up from there. And honestly, one of the biggest things that helped me through just feeling better in the mornings is I would sit down and listen. Like I said, I'd wake up at seven, I'd start my stream around nine. And for that whole time, probably for a year straight, I would listen to motivational speeches for success. I would go on YouTube, I would just search up compilations of them. And I just listened to it. It would make me feel like I could do it. It would make me believe in myself. That's so fucking awesome. I got chills just listening to you talk about that. Um, how old were you when you experienced all that? I mean, I think depression is really, really hard, but how old were you when you experienced that in your childhood? I think I was too young to really understand what I was feeling, but um, maybe 10 to like 14, a big, that was a big period of all that. I think I was just too young to really understand the full extent of everything. And then when, obviously when you get older, even if you're not thinking about it, it's something that you never processed at the time. And any small thing, even if it's completely irrelevant, it can just make your mind just sink. Is your mom still with us today? Yep, she is. She's back home in Newfoundland. She must be so <laughs> proud of you. She is. She messages me every day. She would message me. It's funny. She would message me and be like, oh, my God, you're going to be a celebrity. It's like, no, mom, that's not how this works. <laughs> I love that. Hey, well, the journey is still early days. It's early days. And you're a celebrity in your own right, which, yep. is, which is really cool. When you, when you bring that to your content and you, um, it feels like a lot of people deal with a lot of um, mental blocks when it comes to content creation, especially in the, in the early days. But even when you get bigger you still face a lot of those you mm -hmm. mentioned things like watching those videos did that really help you kind of overcome some of those blocks so i i actually watched a couple before i even came on this just because i was just looking at the old ones that i'd watched i had them bookmarked on google chrome and it's still watching it i sat there for the full hour while editing a clip and listened to it the first time i've did that in a couple months and it just puts you in the right mindset. I don't know what it is. It's just hearing somebody talk about their struggles and what they went through and how hard they worked for everything they've achieved in their life just makes you want to do better and be better. I don't doubt a lot of people listening to this right now feel the same way about you, which is really cool. I hope so. That's what I want to do. It's really cool. <laughs> you mentioned your wife earlier, so she's really good at helping you see that site and do that site. 
how important a role is you can have played in your content creation journey in general? Man, I wouldn't have been here without it. Without her, I would have never been where I am because she actually bought my first PC. I I was a uh, I was in barber school at the time and I didn't I didn't have any money. I was a server on the side. I was in barber school. I didn't have a thousand dollars to buy a crappy PC. And my wife is a healthcare professional. She she gave me a thousand dollars, but I wouldn't I I tell my I would never be able to take it. I told her like the only way I'm going to take it is if you let me give it back to you in the next couple months because I can't do that. And she she gave it to me with no expectations of getting it back or anything like that. But the next month I gave it back and um she bought my first thousand dollar PC. I think it's still sitting on the floor back there i've built all my pcs too which was pretty cool I, I didn't want to spend the extra money on getting people to build it for me and uh it was only yeah like i said it was only a thousand dollars i played on an xbox i got an elgato capture card that i'm still using and i streamed as she created the dream for me that's phenomenal honestly i still got this note oh, sh she uh, she used to write notes every um, probably every second day or a few times a week. When I go down, she'd have it laid like on my mouse pad, just telling me you got this. Like she got all the confidence in me. That even if I don't see it, it's it was amazing. She she was my Mr. motivation. I want to give her a shout out. Tina, yeah, Tina, you're awesome. Thank you so much for getting she where he <laughs> is. That, that's super cool to hear. I'm when you think about that, like, a lot of people who are going on this content creation journey, I think it can, it can be really lonely. Uh, and it's important that you have people around you. You talked about how it was negative people or toxic people that were also around you. How did you yep. deal with that? Because I know a lot of listeners are facing some similar. To my part, I'm lucky that it wasn't my like primary family and friends. I'm lucky that it wasn't my mom or my wife or my father-in-law. Uh, that would probably be a lot harder. But there was a couple family members, a couple friends that was saying, like, what, what the hell are you doing? Why just, you got a good job. You're a barber. You're, it's, it's a, it pays okay. You're doing well. Why, why do you want to ruin that? And I got tired of explaining myself because... You shouldn't have to explain yourself to anyone besides yourself. And I just, I, one day they messaged me and I just didn't respond. I just didn't have the patience to deal with toxicity in my life because I noticed that it was affecting me daily. And may, even if they haven't messaged me in a week, it was still affecting me and making me be down on myself. And I didn't want to deal with that anymore. That is perfect. Yeah. I think a lot of people could take that to heart is don't let people um, kind of surround yourself like that. You talked about, and even in the last no. week, um, having or taking a break can be really challenging as a content creator. You've taken a, little, a few breaks over your journey, but in, in the last yep. week, how do you feel when you, the time is right to take a break versus just got to push through? If you, so this is the first time I've been like, last week was the first time I've ever been like really burnt out. Uh, I've had a couple times in the past two years that I've felt it coming on, but I just pushed through it and I didn't feel anything about it. It just went away and I was still having fun. But over the last week, which I took two days off, which is the, I think the first time I've ever taken two days off in a week. I think I've only taken up to up to 20 days off in the past two years. And um, which... You shouldn't do it. I know it's hard to not go live because even on your days off, you're thinking, what if I don't go live? Like, how is this going to affect my page? How is this going to affect my content? How is this going to affect my streams? But you need to look after yourself because I've, I noticed last week when I got really burnt out, it affected my content big time. It affected my viewership without taking the days off because I wasn't myself. I was down. I just wasn't feeling good. And um, the days off was 
even if I just sat on the couch most of the day, it was just good to not think about my content. Good not to think about everything. As much as I love my community, as much as I love everything to do with this, as much as lucky as I am to be where I am, sometimes you need a break. You just, you can't continue going all the time or you'll have no gas left in the tank and that's when you'll lose everything because your content will suffer big time were you always that self-aware and kind of managing your own energy or is that something you built over time um i don't think i was this self-aware no i think like i said this is the first time that i've ever actually felt it to this extent and taken time off but um I think I should have taken breaks previously, especially like just take a weekend and I don't know, me and my wife go so drive two hours from here to, to Halifax or something like that. But I just constantly felt like I needed to grind and needed to be there because I seen everyone else was there. Everyone else was still going. And um, I I never really thought about what could happen to your to your mental health in the future if you're not taking care of yourself like to do with this because if i would have taken a break let's just say two months ago when i was feeling like the game was dry like i just wasn't having fun if i would have taken a two-day break then i probably wouldn't have had my burnout last week and what i'm currently going through what would you say to a new a new creator who's just kind of early in the journey and is on that grind like you were, you know, when you were doing the two to three hours a night of sleep, like what would you say to someone who's at the beginning of that road? It's a, uh, it's a hard road. It's a roller coaster. It's going to be a hundred times more downs than ups. You're never going to feel like at the beginning, you're not going to feel accomplished doing this at all. You're going to feel down. But the thing is, if you go into this, about superficial things, thinking about money, thinking about all that, you're never going to enjoy doing it. You're never going to make it that way. You need to go into it with a mindset because you love doing this. Take your breaks, take care of yourself, give that extra mile. So you need to work to be your best self at all times. And being your best self isn't constantly grinding. Being your best self is taking care of yourself so you can grind. A lot of people miss that second part, I think, which is the self-awareness. It's so evident you have that now. One of the um, yep. things that is incredibly pertinent about your journey, right, is you, it's just how much of a positive guy you are about, even based on all your past experiences and the challenges that you've had, how you radiate just positivity for your entire community, not just your community, but like other creators. You just lift them up. And I think it's, it's something that you're uniquely in a position to do and are doing such a great job at. What kind of things do you do for your community or for, for other creators that are kind of going through a challenging time and kind of need pulled up? And I love the way that you, even today, you, you, you kind of witness yourself and you're like, I've got these challenges and I, I, I use those YouTube content, like motivational content, just to kind of amp you up and get you inspired and get you ready to kind of fire. Even though yeah. you've now been doing this for a while, you're still kind of using that to kind of amp you up. Still to this day, I I don't do it as much. I was doing it every single morning before, but I I feel like I should do it more now, though, because I feel like when you get burnt out and you're doing it for so long, you don't have that fire under your ass like you did at the beginning you know what i mean because you get a i'm not i'm not comfortable by no means i'm i'm the type of person i'll never be comfortable i want to continuously go and go and go i i don't want to feel comfortable but a lot of people get in that comfortable zone and that's when they lose their fire and lose their motivation to keep going as hard as they can i'll i don't think i'll ever be comfortable <laughs> talking about not being comfortable a few months uh like we're now a couple of months in the year but just before the year started you shared your 2022 goals on twitter like mm -hmm. talk us through them like how have you done against those goals that you set just before the new year uh a lot of people say make your goals 
something that you can achieve 100% because you'll feel more, more motivated. But I'm the type of person, shoot for the stars. Because if you don't want the best, if you don't want to be the best, if you don't want to compete with the best, if you don't want to just grow to the best that you can, you won't. So I always shoot for goals that I might not reach. But in my head, I'm going for it no matter what. Even if next year I got to use the exact same goals, you know what? I'll probably increase it by another 50,000. Even, even if I might not reach it, I'll still increase it because I want to be there. And you got to manifest it. Talk about that a little bit. What do you mean by manifest it? You need to have a mindset where you're telling yourself that you can do it. You need to believe in yourself. You need to... You need to tell yourself that one day it might not be tomorrow, it might not be next year, it might not be five years from now, but if I work as hard as I can, if I put my all into this, if I create my own opportunities, because no one's going to hand out opportunities to you, like, that's just the way it is. You need to grind it yourself. When I first started, I, I was so new to the Twitter world, I had no idea what was going on. But I turned on, I'd say, everyone from Facebook's notifications. And I was the first one to like their tweet and commented on, comment on it every single time. And uh, in a non annoying way, you can't, you, can't just con you can't just comment on it and be like, hey, play with me. You can't, you can't do that. You need to get your name out there. You need to get your brand out there. You need to network. It's so important. No, you're, you're just saying it's so important to get out there and like go after it. Like you got to be willing to be, to be hungry. And I think your point around like being super clear on like where you want to go. And even if it's audacious, even if it's bigger than you, just be willing to believe that you can get there. You need to self-belief is everything. Self-motivation, self-belief, because motivation from someone else can only go so far. But if you start motivating yourself somehow, if you start believing in yourself, it all, everything lines up. Yeah. I, I'd say the thing we, we work with thousands of creators, and pipeline and the moment like one of the most powerful things that happen is when you can see that someone starts believing in themselves because it's very hard to do that in this world there's so many people trying to do this especially when covid hit and the world shut down you know it's everyone's opportunity to start streaming and it's it's so hard to believe in yourself at the beginning it's so hard especially when you go live for six hours and you don't see anybody come in. You're at zero the full time. It's so hard. But one day you're going to get one person come in. He's going to tell his friend he's going to come in. And then you'll get recommended on someone in a very small way. You, you'll make it five more people come in. And next thing you know, you're at 30. Next thing you know, you get featured and you randomly got a thousand people in your stream and you, you're not going to get it, all of it. I learned that at the beginning, when it first happened for me, I was averaging around 50 viewers on Facebook. And then I got featured one day and I was like, oh my God, is this it for me? Like, am I going to average like 2000 viewers all the time now? And uh, you need to realize that that's only going to bring you so far. That opens up a door for people to see your content, but it's your job to keep Love them there. there. Where can people, like they're, they're going to want to check your content out after this, Jay, if after this podcast, where can they go to see your content? Uh, Facebook.com slash nerves, N-U-R-V-E-S. Oh, we will absolutely share that out, man. Che, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This was great. You are an absolute thank you inspiration. For me, man. I, and I just have to say the, the way you motivated yourself um, and continue to motivate others is really inspiring. So thank you for everything you do. It's inspiring to me to see people actually respond to my content that that'll keep you inspired yourself so it's amazing thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode i wanted to just end this with a little bit of context on why we do what we do we're former content creators ourselves and we just really want to help as many content creators as we can that's why we started pipeline.gg it's a platform where you can find other like-minded creators and learn from the pros who have already been there get step-by-step -step guidance so you can avoid all the mistakes that we made in the beginning if you love the episode, there's going to be even more inside of Pipeline. So check it out. Head over to pipeline.gg.